Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Today, I've invited Elliot Jones, the creator of the documentary Unlocking Potential, to share a bit about his experience in uni as well as creating this documentary. Welcome, Elliot, to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Uh, can we start off with a bit of introductions? Can you tell us who you are? Yeah. Um. So I am Elliot. I'm Elliot Jones. I do a few different things, Um. but I'm here today mainly around my work regarding dyslexia. Um, I've done a bit, all sorts of different things. I've um, I've made a documentary. I've um, you know advocated through petitions to parliament, um, given talks at um, to different companies across the world um, about building a more inclusive workplace culture. They, I think that that pretty well encapsulates me. Mm -hmm. uh, can you? I think it's just so because I think it's so interesting that you created a whole documentary around looking at dyslexia from a new perspective. So could you just talk us through like the starting process? How, what motivated you to begin this you know, process of interviewing people and making it in, into like something that people could watch all, all across the world? Yeah, so well, for me, for, well, first and foremost, I have dyslexia myself. Um, so it's always a good starting point, um, but um, for me, it's something I've I've always wished to do. I've always wished to do something around dyslexia and kind of, what was, what's it now, a couple of years ago in my final year of school, I um, I kind of, you know, went to action. I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Um, and I ended up, um, you know, deciding I was going to do a documentary and kind of get famous people from across New Zealand and a few of them from around the world um, to kind of chat about their journey with dyslexia, just to, you know, really hopefully make you know kids a bit excited when they find out that they have dyslexia is really the goal so i watched a documentary and you interviewed many many people from all across like different um professionals different careers were, were there any challenges in getting into contact with these people or even just like interviewing them yeah, definitely. There was there's certainly a lot of um a lot of pacing up and down the room before calling them. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, you know, it's it's really hard to chat about, you know, um your struggles, especially, you know, when you've kind of these people have, you know, they've gone a long way in life. And often people with dyslexia, you know, find it, you know, quite shameful, often a quite painful experience along the way for some people. Um, so coming to talk about that is is often really difficult. Um but I think the people in the documentary at the end of the day, um, I, there were certainly like a lot of rejections um, from different people. Um, but I think most people just really wanted to kind of make a difference for the next kind of kid coming along with dyslexia. So they had a had a better experience than themselves. So, so people are actually pretty um, very generous and very open um, with their sharing, which was very, very helpful for a random 17 year old kid trying to call up all these incredible people. Yeah, absolutely. And you did call up some very incredible people. Um, I forgot his name, unfortunately, but he was the creator of some of the Lord of the Rings sets, right? Uh, yeah, Sir, Sir Richard Perry. Taylor. Yes, exactly. Yes. What was that no, experience he, like? Oh, look, he's he's a really lovely person. He is incredibly generous. He was um he was he's very busy actually at the time. Um, because obviously kind of the world opened up after COVID and everyone's like, okay, films back on track and they had a jam-packed schedule so it was really very interesting to hear from them um but so many really um incredible people um along the way you know from the likes of you know uh, scott robertson who's the coach of the all blacks now and you know michelle sharp ceo of unicef down in new zealand so yeah no, I, I honestly i was inspired interviewing them myself at the time um it was pretty incredible yeah absolutely excuse me absolutely i mean I do this podcast, so I kind of understand what you mean when you say you get inspired by people like all across different um, careers. <clears throat> and actually, uh, it's a wonderful initiative you've started. And I'm just wondering, is there anything that people like us or like me can do to bring more awareness about dyslexia? <clears throat> yeah, I think I think always the first thing I say um, is... I think your attitude personally around dyslexia is always a super important thing, right? Because people with dyslexia actually have, you know, a whole lot to offer, right? You know, they, they make up, I think it's something like 60% of millionaires. They make a massive percentage of entrepreneurs, successful athletes and singers. And 
And so I think, you know, when you, you know, give that positivity, it kind of allows them to kind of flourish and thrive, which is great for them, right? But it's also really good for you if you've got someone who's got dyslexia on your team um, or you know someone, right? Because, you know, them going well is generally great for whatever team they're on. Um, so I, I think it's, I think they have a lot of value to offer themselves as well as, you know, yourself and anyone watching has to offer to them. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, let's talk a bit about your experience at Babson College so far. I know you're a freshman, is that correct? Yes, um, I have had one semester there. Is there anything in particular? There's, there's a whole lot to chat about about Babson, but um, I imagine you've got to keep to some sort of timing. Um, anything in particular or more of a broad lens? Uh, uh, well, I just wanted to ask you, like, did you always know that you're going to go to Babson? And if, you know, it's lived up to your dreams? Yeah, um, so I think that's a, um, yeah, that's a little bit of a story. Um, so originally, I think the first bit was I, I, when I decided I wanted to go and go to college outside of New Zealand, um, was it was actually reasonably late. Um, I did some work um, with the University of Hawaii while I was in high school. I was the vice president of their debate society for a little bit. Um, and I was obviously involved in the American debating circuit. It was during that wonderful time of COVID. Um, so everything was online and I was happy in my little town of New Zealand, uh, in my little town in New Zealand, just to kind of get involved in the college debating circuit. And so I met a lot of American debaters and I was like, oh, this is awesome. You know, love this. Um, maybe I should go over here and go to university, um, which kind of led to me looking up a lot of different universities. I considered a lot of different ones. Um, but in the end, when I actually um, ended up applying to Babson, I, I'd, I'd actually settled that that was the place I wanted to end up at. Um, because I think, and I, it has lived up to what I wish from it, you know, it's certainly a great place if you are wishing to be entrepreneurial or um, or anything to do with business, really. It's um, yeah, a really incredible place um, to do all those things. Mm -hmm. oh, that's wonderful to hear. Um, can we talk a bit about what it's like to be a uni student? The first thing I'm curious is, what is your day-to-day -day plan? What does that look like? Um, I think chaotic would be the word you're looking for. Um, but um, yeah, I think life as a uni student, um, there's a few different things. Um, uh, so a day-to-day -day plan for me, um, I kind of run a bit of a more of a long-term plan just to kind of keep my eye ahead um, to make sure there's got an eye on things that are coming up. Um, but day-to-day, -day, um, actually originally when I arrived, I, I tried to have this day-to-day -day plan that was fixed and I was like, hey, here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do this and this and this. The truth was that that never actually works um, because you end up three hours into your day and you get pulled off to do some something, you know, someone on um, someone in a business needs a hand from you with something or, um, you know, you get a chance to chat with one of your professors. Um, so I think that's the thing with university. I think, you know, plans are great day to day and, you know, you go to your lectures and everything, but outside of your, your kind of set lectures that you end up at, I think the real opportunity in university is kind of doing everything else that, that isn't in the, in the lecture syllabus. So, um, it's a bit of everything, um, to be to be honest with you. Um, but uh, you know, social networking. Um, obviously at Babson we're all into business, so I might end up watching a pitch competition one afternoon, or um, you know, end up chatting to some people about about their latest business idea and whether it's going to work or not. Um, yeah, so it's really humming environment of business entrepreneurship really at Babson. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that sounds amazing because um, if you think about it, all this academical or academic stuff, you can learn by yourself. But where in the world are you going to get another chance to connect with all these different people? So, yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, uh, I think that's I think that's a great point you touch on around that. You know, I think I think, you know, there's a lot of value from my lectures. Love my lectures this semester. They're really great. Um, but I think there's a, there's just just as much value to be found outside of the lectures um, because you spend however many hours a week in a lecture hall, but you spend a lot more outside of it. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I wanted to kind of touch upon was, were there any difficulties for you to move away from your old community in New Zealand to a whole new different country and you know to be at university with all these other different people you've never met, met before? Was there difficulty in trying to find a place for yourself? Yeah, um, 
I, th I, I think I was really worried that it was going to be really difficult um, going away. I was like, you know, it's a long way away, you know, probably going to be homesick. Um, when I actually got there, um, as with many of the things, you know, we worry about in life, they never eventuate to be quite as bad as we think. Um, so I actually, I had a pretty smooth transition into college. Um, very, very busy, lots on, um, but that was great. Um, kind of gave me stuff to do with my day. Um, I think I spent my first week trying to trying to meet as many people as I could. Um, but I don't have a particularly good memory for names. So I meet a lot of people every day and it's like, oh, lovely to see you again, Ellie. And I'm like, lovely to meet you as well. Um, but they, they're very generous and remind me of their name. Um, but yeah, I had a pretty smooth transition to college, um, I would say, as a whole. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, so what do you, I mean, I don't know if at Babson you choose your major in the first year, but do you see yourself doing anything particular in terms of major or careers in the following years? Yeah, so, um, oh, I, so I think, it, so everyone is doing business at Babson and then you kind of have a concentration in something in particular, um, cause obviously Babson, you know, very renowned for their business, um. I'm, we haven't decided our concentrations yet, but for me, I'm probably going to end up doing entrepreneurship is what Babson's most famous for. Um, yeah, they're very, very good at it. Um, I love entrepreneurship myself. Um, you know, business is just enjoyable. Um, you know, gets me out of all the different problems you run into is what gets me excited to go do something in the morning. Um, but yeah, I'm, Oh, I think that's one of the great things about Babson, actually. They've got a course um, called FME, um, Foundations of Business and Entrepreneurship, oh, oh, Foundations of Management and Entrepreneurship. And everyone takes that in their first two semesters. Um, and pretty much there, you've got to, you pretty much have to plan a company, launch a company, run a company um, as part of your random, massive team of people. Um, and I think kind of all the, the, the opportunity there is that you obviously run into a bunch of failures um, and issues, right? And it's kind of how you bounce back from those. That's that's really entre what all entrepreneurship is, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. I totally agree. And actually, that kind of leads me into the last question I have for you today. Um, if you had to give your best piece of advice to high school students, what would it be? My best piece of advice to high school students? Um I think my best piece of advice is um, I actually always love this quote. I'm going to steal someone else's quote actually, um, because I think it's, I think it's very good advice for high school students. I think um, I would give myself the same advice as well, because I've run into this quote recently. Um, but I think high school students, you know, you get caught up in whatever your latest, you know, because not everything is a success, right? You run into a bunch of different failures, a bunch of different knockbacks, right? Um, and I think my key piece of advice would probably just be that the failures that you run into are actually what you learn from. Um, and I always, the, the quote I was going to use was the one from Winston Churchill, where he says, um, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's always the courage to continue that counts. Right. Because like, you know, just to talk about the documentary, right. I, could, I think the first, maybe five people we talked to, uh, no responses, then I've got two people. And then I think I was like a month out from launching the documentary. I said, this is when we're going to launch it. We still had two people um, and everyone just kind of came in at the last minute. So you just got to, you know, it's got to keep, keep on going. Right. I think, I think that would be my advice. Don't take um, your failures as failures, take them as, as an opportunity just to kind of learn because you, you probably won't remember them next year or next month or depending on how big it is. That'd be my advice. And that's a great piece of advice to end on. Well, that is the end of the interview. I had a great time talking to you too, Elliot. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, and thank you to my viewers for watching or listening and stay tuned for the next episode.